KCR 3's Deirdre Fitzpatrick joins us right now with more on this week's episode of Dying Task. And I hope yep. I didn't say her name wrong, Deirdre. <laughs> <laughs> I, you did fine. You okay, did fine. thank you. So from runner to activist to author, Alison Desir is the author of Running While Black. This memoir tells her personal running story while exploring themes of representation and inclusivity in the running industry. She's on the Dying Task podcast this week, and here's a preview of our conversation. When I... I'm referring a book to somebody almost always like nine times out of 10, I'll say, if you liked fill in the blank, you will love this. Mm. I can't do that with your book. And I have recommended it to lots of people, mm. but I can't think of a single book. Thank you that I love hearing that because as I was writing it and even in the book proposal phase, you know, your publisher wants to know what's this book like? <laughs> and I kept saying, well, it's not really like anything that's out there yet. Um, I love the opportunity to mix memoir and history and call to action all in one space. So I appreciate you recognizing that. I love memoir, but I also love the history part of your book. And you you do something really interesting in it where you, at the, I think it's in the beginning of the book, you match up the two time different line. timelines. Yeah, mm -hmm. the timelines are so great. So on the left side, there is U.S. running history with all these different dates going back a long way. And then on the right column is Black people's reality that's marked, marked up in it as well. And the overlap is so fascinating. And I started thinking about that. And what was the context? I started asking myself, well, where were Black people in that moment? Because I had always heard this history of the so-called long distance running boom starting with that event. And as I dug deeper, I realized, well, we were in the 1963, we didn't have black people didn't have the right to vote. We couldn't walk in the front door in Eugene, Oregon. We only were allowed to own property um, in 1957. So I started to realize, OK, there's a disconnect here between long distance running history and our history and the way that our lack of access to resources, to the outdoors, et cetera, has informed our participation. So starting with that date, I just got into my nerd mode and started <laughs> picking out all these moments. And I, it's honestly my favorite part of the book because I think it immediately reorients people into how they understand running and movement in this country. Approachable. So on this week's Dying to Ask, who inspired Allison to start running and what she noticed instantly? What happened after she started her own running club in Harlem and only one person showed up? Yeah, wow. the historic reasons <laughs> why distance running has lacked diversity and some of the unusual opportunities that have come Allison's way since her memoir came out. Scan that QR code, it'll take you right to the episode or you can search Dying to Ask on your favorite podcast platform.